Good day, fellow researchers. I am Dr. Rodrigo M. Velasco, and I will be presenting my research titled Gender Responsive Value Chain Analysis of the Lambanog Industry in the Philippines. I also included in the presentation video clips of the Lambanog production. The coconut vodka, popularly known as Lambanog, primarily produced in Quezon Province, the Lambanog capital of the Philippines, is on the threshold as a dollar earning industry. It is considered for product development being one of the primary producers of the country. This 100% natural, 80 to 95% proof spirit, 40% to 45% alcohol content originates from the sap of the coconut flower. Through fermentation and distillation, coconut sap is processed into lambanog. This exalted, natural, and organic drink gained the Seal of Excellence Award from the Department of Trade and Industry, Center for International Trade Expositions and Mission, or DTI CTEM. The lambanog production has been in business since 1908. However, its international acceptance started only in 2001 as its introduction in the export market. It is a recipient of the Packaging Excellence Award at ProStar 2001, an annual competition sponsored by the Packaging Institute of the Philippines. Also, it was recognized as one of the 337 best food innovations in the Anuga Food Fair held in Germany in 2003. Despite the many local and international recognitions and awards, Lambanog making still remains a small-scale industry. The current study is an initial step in establishing a development plan for the industry. This study uses the Gender Responsive Value Chain Analysis or GRVCA to determine the current status of the Lambanog industry in the Philippines. GRVCA is patterned after the generic value chain model as introduced by Michael Porter. The VCA approach develops economic viability and sustainability, creates linkages, coordinates public and private roles, and promotes self-reliant development. Gender issues were incorporated in the chain to map out concerns about men and women in the workplace. The researcher personally visited, interviewed, and observed the participants to answer the following queries. Number one, condition of Lambanog industry players who are producer, distiller, distributors, retailers, and customers. And number two, identification of constraints and opportunities. The current status of the industry was revealed by the 12 distillers endorsed and highly recommended by the Department of Trade and Industry, Quezon Province. 60 distributors, retailers, and 100 consumers all dispersed in the different towns and city of the province. The distillers are considered to be the prime movers and have been in Lambanog production for more than 12 years. On the other hand, Snowball approach was used to locate various Lambanog distributors since there is no list of distributors registered with the Department of Trade and Industry as well as the local government units. Lastly, Quota sampling was used in the selection of Lambanog drinkers. Figure 1 shows the value chain map of the Lambanog industry. The basic sequence of functions in the Lambanog industry value chain include specific inputs, processing and production, commerce and trade, and final sale under which various activities, value added, operators, and enablers are identified. The mapping segregates the various functions into various colors. The arrows signify the process flow while the broken lines separate one function from another function. Lambanog making starts with coconut sap collection. The collectors locally known as mangangarit tap the white liquid from the unopened coconut flower of the coconut tree. The raw materials will be transported to the production area for fermentation. The coconut sap is manually transferred to the fermentation vats. 
The sap is allowed to ferment for about three days. After the fermentation, the tuba will undergo the process of distillation. The traditional process of distillation is a batch type pot still process with rice husk or wood as a source of heat. After distillation, the product, also known as alak, is transferred to plastic containers. Some of the distilleries have bottling and packaging before the final sale. There are two types of lambanog being produced in the Philippines. The most popular is the pure lambanog with 45% alcohol content or 90% proof. Some of the distilleries produce a flavored lambanog, pure lambanog soaked with different types of fruits such as apple, prune, jackfruit, and others. Costs involved in the lumber nut production include raw materials, transport of raw materials, depreciation of containers, repairs and maintenance of coconut plantation, depreciation of machineries and equipment, direct labor cost, wood scrap or husk, electricity and water, distribution, battling and or packaging, and promotion and marketing. The 12 distillers have various production capacities ranging from 8 gallons to 120 gallons per day or an average of 43 gallons per day. The average cost of Lambanog production is 152.81 pesos per gallon, sold at an average selling price of 197 pesos per gallon. Wholesalers sell the product from 75 pesos to 350 pesos per gallon or at an average selling price of 150 pesos. Retailers normally sell the product from 18 pesos to 20 pesos per 350 milliliters. The major key players in the industry include 10 coconut growers, of which 7 are male and 3 female. 13 coconut sap producers 10 male and 3 female, 20 male coconut sap collectors, and 29 male distributors. Few of the distillers own coconut plantation. Many are leasing coconut plantations while some others source raw materials from tuba producers. All of the distilleries are family owned under the micro and small enterprises with not more than 10 employees. There are 12 distillers owned by 9 male and 4 female. Some of the distilleries are registered under the names of the husband and wife. There are 5 commissioned distillers, 4 of them are male. These distillers implement the profit sharing scheme with the coconut sap producers. There are 2 renters of distillery plant. Lambanog products are distributed through various channels as outsourcers registered and unregistered wholesalers, and Lambanog processors. Of the total Lambanog wholesalers in the area, only seven are registered. There are wholesalers that reprocess pure Lambanog products through mixing with water and other chemicals and sell the same at the lower price. Distillers, on the other hand, produce exclusively for outsourcers that export Lambanog to other countries. Retailers of Lambanog are wine houses, salubong centers, roadside stalls, malls, and trade fairs, all of which cater to Class A, B, C, D, and E market. Public market and Sari Sari stores sell to Class C, D, and E. The customers' preferences on the Lambanog products were pure Lambanog, flavored, and other variants. The frequency of drinking Lambanog were monthly, weekly, daily, and majority occasionally. The factors considered in buying Lambanog were quality and taste, price, and promotional strategies. Customers perceive that label, container, and seal of Lambanog products should be improved. The Lambanog industry is supported by various government agencies, such as the Department of Trade and Industry. Department of Science and Technology, 
and local government units. Figure 2 shows the constraints and opportunities analysis of the Lombanog industry. The various constraints identified by the distillers under the input provision are high worker turnover and sustainability of supply due to weather condition and seasonality of sap collection. Since there is no standard paying scale as well as benefits for workers, most of them are not staying good in their jobs. Meanwhile, the supply of tuba varies depending on weather. During cold and dry season, as well as when there is typhoon, the yield is low. On the processing and production, lack of training of Lombanog processors, poor packaging and labeling, lack of facilities, equipment for distillation of Lombanog, and non-implementation of quality standards in Lombanog production are the major constraints. Since most of the distillers inherited the business from their families, the early training is the early exposure to the production and management of the industry. There is no standard package and label for Lombanog products. Lombanog is commonly stored in a plastic container. Customers need to bring containers where the drink will be transferred into when bought. The Philippine National Standard for Lombanog Production has been drafted and approved by the Technical Working Group of the Department of Trade and Industry, but is not yet implemented until today. Wholesalers enumerated constraints such as no standard pricing for Lombanog products, influx of local and commercial alcoholic drinks, and increasing number of underground distributors compounding Lombanog. Prices of Lombanog products vary depending on competition. The wide range of selling prices as imposed by the wholesalers make it impossible for high-priced Lombanog products to sustain the operation. This is due to the increasing number of distributors compounding pure Lombanog with water or other chemicals to lower the cost. Also, there are quite a number of alcoholic drinks dictating a very strong competition in the market. With the ever-increasing number of alcoholic drinks, another constraint being faced is the changing taste and preferences of the customers. Under the input provision, the opportunities are sharing of resources through formation of association and excess of raw materials from other suppliers. For the processing and production, Establishment of Common Shared Facilities, or CSF, availability of quality standards in Lombanog production, and support from local government units. Commerce trade, availability of channels of distributions and creation of another market segment for Lombanog products. And for final sale, innovations on new flavors of Lombanog and establishment of a brand name for the Philippine Lombanog. By establishing a model management development plan for Lombanog industry in the Philippines, it has all the potentials and opportunities from a small-scale industry to an export-oriented business. This study recommends to government agencies such as the Department of Trade and Industry, the lead institution, the local government units from the province and municipalities, the Department of Science and Technology, Cooperative Development Authority and Technical Education Skills and Development Authority, among other members of the Technical Working Group, to be convened and organized immediately the establishment and implementation of the Model Management Development Plan. Thank you very much. For your questions and concerns, you can email the author at rvnoji at yahoo.com.